Maybe I should try falling and because apparently this uh, Apple Watch, it uh, latest Apple Watch has this feature yeah. that it detects falls. So for it's advertised for older people as a sort of a savior. What if I hit your watch? Will it register it as a fall? I think it's uh, something to do with a gyroscope and something to do with the accelerometer. So like when you fall, you fall at a certain speed mm. and like I have no clue how this works. But I think we should try. <laughs> we, should, we should try in a minute. Just to yeah, put yeah. it on camera as well. And, uh, <laughs> maybe not. All right. <laughs> oh, bummer. Right. Three, two, one. I'm concerned consumer Tim. And I'm devoted dietitian George. And welcome to this episode of the Immunity Podcast. On this podcast, we research the ins and outs of immune health. And explore the science so that you can optimize your immune system and your health. So on this episode, we are going to be talking about exercise. And exercise is a very important part of human life. So we are going to first discuss whether it's a necessary part. And the first question I would have for George would be, can I work out every single day? Yes, that's a very good question. You can. Obviously, it matters on uh, something, and that is intensity. You cannot expect to run a marathon every day, obviously, right? So right. Uh, what matters most is how do you feel exercising every day? Let's say you exercise with moderate intensity every day. You go out for a jog, or you have some team sports, or uh, you do some calisthenics. It doesn't really matter how do you feel. If you feel exhausted from exercising and you feel better when you take a day rest in between here or there, then maybe that might be better for you. Right. But, so, but, but generally speaking, you can. It just depends on the intensity. So we do want this podcast to be beneficial to the listeners. And therefore, since this podcast is called the Immunity Podcast, I would like to ask you about um, exercise and its impact on the immune system in a way where, for example, would walking impact the immune system in any way? Because walking is an exercise, for example. Yeah, that's actually a good point you're, you're making there. I think we need to distinguish between exercise and general physical activity. That's because not everybody would see walking as a form of exercise, whereas running, um, they would. So walking, uh, cycling, uh, obviously you can uh, go at a different pace, you go, can go faster or slower. But generally speaking, if we take physical activity like normal activities or even working in the garden or like doing some household chores, just walking. Uh, I don't call those exercise and they are still very beneficial and they do have immune health benefits just like exercise. Okay, so I have an Apple Watch and the Apple Watch classifies exercise under a bunch of different types of activities for example so walking they considered like indoor walk and then outdoor walk right so it is part of exercise but um, I think the better question would be how much should you walk for it to be considered an exercise right maybe a good question would be when do we get immune health benefits from walking is that a good question I think they're all great question but let's let's do that one sure Okay, so uh, studies have shown that walking f five days a week, at least five days a week, and then 30 to 40 minutes each time, and at a pretty fast pace, like uh, they call it brisk walking, so you don't go too slow, you just... Uh, sort of a, a stroll. Yeah, but a little, a little bit faster than a relaxing stroll, right? You go a little bit faster, and... If you walk at that pace for uh, for that frequency and, and duration, then there is definitely an immune health benefit. And it has even shown that people who don't do that, who are uh, inactive, so to speak, and the people that walk, actually, they get sick um, re significantly less. Right. They reduce their sick days by up to half. So that's quite significant. So basically, 
uh, regularity is key then, right? To right. Yes, exactly. So, and I think for exercise, we have the same benefits. Let's say you exercise once a week, you know, that, that's already beneficial. Even one time, there are some benefits. Okay. But if you want to benefit more than more frequent in terms of like walking at least five days a week, it's more beneficial. I see. Now, speaking of benefits, um, let's sort of break down the benefits for the audience of walking. I'm sure there are a lot of different benefits from different types of uh, methods. For example, if you would consider walking uh, would improve your, your overall physical health or maybe it would improve your um, um, your mental health or what are the different types of benefits that walking can give you? Okay, so there are actually a lot of benefits. Uh, so we just named one, immunity. It's great for your immune system and makes total sense that since we're moving, right, we're burning calories at the same time. So that's a great thing too. And if you're brisk walking, if you're if you're going at a faster pace, obviously you're burning a little bit more. So it's great for weight management and weight loss. Okay. There is another one. It also depends on where you walk, but even if you walk um, in the city, not much not much green around you, not many trees, it's still good for your mood. Yeah, we generally feel better when we are more active. That's a major one. Like I encourage everybody to be more active just just because of that, just because we feel better. It's like, a, I think it's it's great for our o overall general well-being. And I don't know about you, but I know my, myself and a lot of other people during the whole lockdowns we've experienced, and every country is different, but almost all of us have experienced lockdowns. Everybody, and, yes. Yes, and how do you feel during a lockdown when you cannot go outside? I think most people have you know, some kind of uncomfortable feeling. Well, I think it depends on where you are also living. Like if you're if you're living in a ginormous villa with access to a nice <laughs> garden and you live, let's say, at on 500 square meters, you know, I think your feeling of um, walking, your overall health would be very different if you're right. living on, let's say, 30 five square, meters. square meters or even, <laughs> uh, let's say, 15, 30 yeah. square meters. Oh, yeah, different. That, that's just horrendous if, if you're stuck there and you cannot go outside. Oh, my yeah. God. Imagine a lockdown on, on 30 square meters. You know, uh, one of my friends, actually, he, he said, I don't know exactly about his apartment. I think it's only 50, 60 square meters. And he had some serious mental issues, he said. He, he almost got crazy, and which is understandable. It's, it's just not a natural place to be in. We didn't evolve in within concrete walls, and now we're stuck within them. We cannot even go outside. And that's the, the other thing I want to mention. The green environment, the trees, if you have a chance to walk in a park, or even better, a forest, that will be even more beneficial for your immune health and your, and your mood. First of all, your cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that lowers when we just spend time in the forest. We don't even have to walk in the forest. You can just sit on a bench somewhere. doesn't matter. But the walking in the forest, like it also, we inhale like natural essential oils from the trees. And they actually activate natural killer cells. And natural killer cells, they target, among others, viruses, which is great. So bears probably don't get sick. <laughs> <laughs> Except during winter, you know, they're, they're lazy as, uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't say lazy as fuck. <laughs> right. Okay, so would you say that um, walking is very good for your joints and uh, sort of, uh, okay, so I remember someone telling me that if I run too much, my kneecaps will wear out <laughs> and my legs will have problems. So don't over, don't push it, you know, don't do it too much. Like, like ultra marathon runners I think they have certain kneecap issues after a while. So how about, how about joints and stuff for walking? Yeah, just regular walking. You know, you're, you're naming a few extreme activities. Let me put it like that. Like just regular folks. Uh, they actually benefit a lot from walking, especially if they have sore joints, because basically it lubricates your joints when you're moving, which is very beneficial. Not only that, 
So you reduce the pain. You also strengthen your muscles around the knees, like your, your, your quads, your upper legs, your lower legs, which basically take pressure off of your joints. And on top of that, you also have the strengthening of your muscles increases your stability. And this matters even more as we get up there in age. And in, in, so we get more stable, our muscles are strong enough, and it reduces it. It's been shown that people who are active, they have a significantly, uh, significant, significantly less risk of falling, which is, which is very important because when old people fall, they have a higher chance of breaking their hip, and hip fractures are generally very complicated. And, and also to solve, right? The whole fixing. Yes, and and it also basically increases mortality risk. That's how complicated things are. So we want to reduce that as much as possible. And even when you're young, obviously it's good to have lubricated joints. It's not just about stability. I see. Maybe I should try falling. and Because apparently this uh, Apple Watch, it, uh, latest Apple Watch, has this feature yeah. that it detects falls. So for it's advertised for older people as a sort of a savior. What if I hit your watch? Will it register it as a fall? I think it's uh, something to do with a gyroscope and something to do with the accelerometer. So like when you fall, you fall at a certain speed. Mm. And like, I have no clue how this works, but I think we should try. <laughs> we, should, we should try in a minute just to yeah, put yeah. it on camera as well. And, uh, <laughs> maybe not. All right. <laughs> oh, bummer. Right. Okay, so in general, does physical activity, such as walking, improve energy levels? Yes, like being active actually increases our energy. And we can easily feel that when we, we stick around at home for too long. And you know that. And I know that. Like, it's not really good for our energy levels. Even if you eat very healthily, you know, it just doesn't work that way. Unless you are being very active at home or you do exercises at home, then, then it will be different. Uh, I was going to ask you, but maybe I, I will, we will hold this topic for another um, podcast, but like, would sexual activity count as being active? <laughs> what do you think? Because okay. you mentioned the whole stay at home, right? Maybe you're active then. What about that? <laughs> okay, what do you think? What do you think? I don't know. Because, I mean, people do go through a certain amount of rigorous activity. Okay, so wait, wait, let me put it like this. When you enjoy some form of intimacy, like how active are you? Are you just lying like a zombie on, on bed or are you actually doing something? You know, the way you can tell is like what happens to your heart rate? Like, are you feeling like you're actually doing something? <laughs> well, of course. I mean, I mean, I think everybody does. does don't, don't people... Well, you can everything. do it more actively or less but, actively. But, yeah, I understand, but not naturally the heart rate elevates, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, so, and you, you can always choose like more complicated, challenging positions if you, you know. So I think we should definitely keep that for another topic, <laughs> right? That would be dope. <laughs> right. Yeah, that okay. deserves its own topic. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll definitely do a, a separate topic for, for that. Yeah. But okay, yeah. Yeah, so uh, about activity, uh, it has a few other benefits as well. So when you move, oxygen, the oxygen flow uh, gets stimulated. And as you know, we need oxygen. And ac uh, actually, oxygen is so important that every single cell in our body needs oxygen. Yes, of yeah. course. So, and that's not, that's not all. Um, we can also improve our sleep. So during the pandemic, um, and I, I, I have to tell you, like I, I've been quite active, but usually when I go on a holiday, I, recently I went to, uh, um, to a mountainous area and I, I was very active. But when I came back, my rhythm was completely off and I, it took me a week to get back on schedule. And during that week, I just didn't, you know, I didn't sleep as well and I didn't, feel as well as I normally do I mean I, not nothing major but I, I did feel something just because my my schedule was off and I was I was very inactive but don't people say normally when you go on a holiday type of thing 
um, you are sort of relaxing and uh, it's it's kind of normal to be off schedule there, you know? So. No, no, I, after I came back. So during the holiday, I was very active. I was like having having so much fun. I was cycling oh, that's what you like mean. uphill and I, I really right. enjoy that. So okay. I was way more active actually than, I'm, than I normally so am. In so in day-to-day life, you're a lot less active than less. a mountainous yeah. area. Yes, I'm quite active. I, I walk a lot, uh, especially coming to the studio. <laughs> I have to walk a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. but but yeah, normally I, I'm I'm not as active as during a holiday. I like to be extra active during those times. I see. I see. Okay, and um, there are two more things I would like to mention. So, if we are active, that is majorly important for our lifespan as well. So, it makes yeah. makes sense in a way, right? So if we decrease our risk for chronic disease, I mean, we, in, we increase our blood flow, we stimulate our blood flow, we decrease our risk for, for example, heart disease or stroke, but that's not all. Like all cause mortality actually drops just by being more active. Like you remember those five days uh, brisk walking? You know, that, that's, that's kind of a range we're talking about here. I see. But you can do it in different ways. If you're very active around the house, it also counts. And, you know, it's even, it's, it's very interesting, I think. And we have done that. We've done that actually also, but not as much. Is when we are, you know, thinking about something uh, during a little meeting and we're walking at the same time. So it's like a walking meeting. And it's very interesting that actually there are companies that are using this technique, so to speak. And because it increases, well, uh, blood flow, it stimulates the brain. It stimulates the brain in such a way that actually people become more creative. It's very interesting. So the thinking improves a lot, right? Yeah. So people found and studies found that actually people were slightly more creative. And to be creative is great when you you know you're in need of ideas for a new project or whatever work you're doing. Well, it depends on the kind of job you also like. You have to be considering, like like. Consider a certain type of job where, for example, a factory is different from a teacher's job. A teacher would be pacing all day mm. or a doctor would be moving all day. So office workers, yes, definitely. You know, the, 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 the kind where it's like clerks and uh, people with uh, cubicle kind of jobs, those def- people definitely need walks. And I, I'm, I'm sure that will be more beneficial to them. Well, obviously, if you're already active during your whatever work you're doing i mean i have friends that work outside in uh, as gardeners and obviously they they move all day long and they're healthier in right. general they're generally pretty fit yes yeah. so okay mm-hmm. all right so um now that now that people cannot travel that much in the world um and because of quarantine and lockdowns and all of that um a lot of people are finding different different ways to be more active during quarantine. So uh, let's talk about how to be more active during quarantine. During quarantines, like we all know it, it's it's generally more challenging to be active when we are stuck at home. Uh, but but it's very important to try and do something you like and there are like tons of ways and if you're creative you can definitely find a way but i have personally um i'll share with you at least 10 ways uh, about what you can do and uh, and if you're listening um please share your ways um because you can also help other people with that and i think we can uh, share as many ways as possible so we're doing it for, you know, we're helping each other here and feel better. Uh, there are activities such as a lot of people are already doing that, yoga or a little less common qigong uh, or tai chi. But those activities, you can, if you find a space, you don't need a lot of space for those, those activities. So it's, it's, it's very convenient. And they also calm you down. It's like a mental and physical exercise Although yoga is a little bit more physical than Tai Chi or Qigong. Yeah, yoga is a pretty pretty intense exercise, I would say. Not so much for fat burning, 
but very much so for stretching and sort of uh, breathe, breathing control, all, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, and it is the stretching. Stretching by itself actually also has immune benefits, which is kind of interesting you mentioned that. Just that it, I would say it does have fat burning qualities and that's just, it all depends on the intensity. Like if I work my legs during a yoga session, I get exhausted. And that's, um, you do, you, since you're activating your muscles, you do it, you do burn calories. So. All right. So I personally really like one activity, which is my favorite and that is street workout. But because it's no longer possible sometimes to do street workouts, it's also, what's another name for street workout? You mean calisthenics? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So is that a good exercise? Yeah. Like what kind of workout do you do? Like you use pull-ups or push-ups or? Well, um, actually at uh, a certain point, I only did pull-ups because I didn't have, uh, I used to live in a place where there wasn't a pull-up bar for me to use so i have bought this home type of pull-up bar that attaches to the oh right to the, yeah. to the door and then yeah. you can just do some pull-ups but i i broke the door so <laughs> <laughs> the the you know the frame on top fell off uh because the pull-up bar was pulling oh, on that's it just shitty quality <laughs> yeah it was a rental so you know oh, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah now i have a better place to mm. do some pull-ups right i think uh, uh calisthenics is a very 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 good thing. yeah excellent yeah it, you're working on your muscles muscle endurance muscle strengthening you can build muscle like that you're burning calories i mean it's it's great yeah and uh martial arts is also a great way especially if you're into martial arts there are like instructional cds which you can use audio to follow a certain sequence or shadow boxing or anything and I'm personally into that because I have a martial arts background and I love listening to those and then go at it for 10 to 20 minutes and I'm completely done after that yeah I also think uh, jump rope is a very good one yeah excellent yeah but jump rope is it's I find it so difficult I never really learned that but even if you do it the, the child's way you know that that is even very effective I like yeah. the uh, boxer type, you, you know, they use a very thin jump right. rope, yeah. but I find it very, very exhausting. Mm. Like it's kind of like, uh, it's a nice exercise, but also at the same time, it's very hard to yeah. do. Yeah, but that is great. You only need a few minutes. You already feel like you've had a workout. Right? 10 minutes a day keeps your fat away. <laughs> that's a great phrase let's use that <laughs> maybe you should call this episode 10 minutes a day keeps the fat a day anyway let's go to the next one well, give me another one okay uh, let's do a funnier one yeah. uh, this is especially funny if you have kids or you have some friends over and you're either drunk or not drunk or you feel in a funny mood twister yes okay. how about twister do you like that game uh, I do, and I, you know how I learned about this game? Uh, I actually learned it through Big Bang Theory, the TV oh, show. Yeah, they had that uh, episode where uh, the main characters, the uh, girls of the main uh, cast, they were playing Twister, and uh, but they were playing Twister be right after they drunk, like drank a lot of uh, wine. So uh, it ended up them like one one of them sleeping off while while the other two were trying to like step over each other, <laughs> and uh, it was it was pretty funny. But I think Twister has its cons and pros. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it depends. Like uh, I know a lot of kids love it, and uh, so if you if you're at home, you have a family, it's a great way to do something different. You know, get away from your screen, from the TV, and do something as a family. And actually, it, it requires you to actually use your muscles. How, how strange that may sound. Yeah, I mean, so, it is hard to stay in one position for a while, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. And uh, which brings me to the following. If you have kids, play with your kids. And, you know, kids are so creative. Actually, we are also creative. We just lose it, like, through our education or through our work it depends on what we do it it totally depends on us but children they have so much creativity if you don't have any games your kids will guide you 
Like they're very good at that. And it's often it's something very active. And if you can go outdoors, if you have a garden, it's even better. There are even more games you can play. So yeah, be involved with your kids if you have a chance, or even if it's your nephew or your niece or whatever. Yeah, the uh, one one game would be uh, hide and seek, right? Right, hide and seek is is is, is awesome. Yeah, I loved hide and seek, but then I got too big. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't hide. But when for you're kids, too big. for kids, it doesn't matter. Like you just have to pretend. I still do that. Like you just pretend and and pretend you don't see them, and then they find you and then they start all like giggling and stuff. <laughs> I oh, know, but we used to play serious hide and seek when I was like, yeah. uh, I don't know, maybe eight, nine. We played serious hide and seek. Like you had to actually hide, and then and the other person had to actually find you. You know, seek you. Yeah. It was a bit different. So we didn't really play it for fun. It was like more like, oh, yeah, I found you. I beat everyone. Blah blah blah. <laughs> like, maybe <it> was, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So um, okay, that's uh, if you have kids, but not everybody has kids. So a lot of people have to work at home. So sitting at your desk is one thing, but standing is another. And standing is, it's a, okay, so it's basically a static kind of workout. If you have to stand all the time, yeah, that, you know, you use more muscles to stay upright. You just do pay attention to your posture, because otherwise you might feel uncomfortable. And having a good posture uh, you know, tucking your pelvis in, keeping your shoulders a little bit back and uh, keep your head straight. Uh, you actually uh, use muscles to do that. And using your muscles will increase your calorie expenditure. So that's a great thing. And sitting, just sitting, well, you don't burn as many calories. So pretty much uh, find, find a time to stand and work and find a time and to sit and work yeah you cannot stand Variations. all day so oh, that, but you, that's why they have those standing desks you know like a, yes it goes yeah. up and down yeah and uh, that's yeah. also because a lot of people experience discomfort like uh, in their lower back especially when they sit too long and yeah so for 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 those people if 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 you have that issue that that's a great thing and even like Technically, it's a blessing in disguise because it allows you to actually, you know, improve your posture and take better care of yourself. I actually saw this um, this device um, which lets you fully lie down in, in a completely horizontal position. And the computer is sort of inbuilt into the whole structure. So you, as you lie down, it the computer sort of goes over you and then when you need to go back up it also goes away and then it goes completely straight so you're standing and you can play and then it goes down again you can lie down you can sit it's like a super nice crazy chair with a gaming computer attached to it it's a it's a device people people can buy if they want to it's an actual device okay so but just because uh, I'm uh, I'm slightly slightly confused here, so it makes you move more. Well, it can sort of as you as you sit and play or work, it moves automatically, sir. So you can have variations. So it can move up, so you are in in upright position, and then yeah, you can yeah. lie down, and then you can sit. Oh, but your body is always supported. Body is fully supported, hundred oh. percent from from uh, feet to head. Okay. So you don't really use your muscles on So you basically stand. it's a very convenient laziness. But it's really sort of. nice so you can stand up and you know slide down and sit all all without moving a muscle. Which okay. is about the So that's the opposite of what we want actually. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, right. let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How about uh, another method? Yeah, okay. So this is you know some people have, and if I don't consciously pay attention to this, I don't drink enough water. So, and what does that have to do with activity? Well, if you drink enough water, you move yourself all the way up to the bathroom. So the thing is, if you are living in a house and you have, let's say you have a bathroom upstairs and downstairs, that's great. Just always use the bathroom on the other floor. Or just come to the studio. Yeah. 
like in the bathroom here is pretty far away, right? It's like 50 meters away. I had no idea. It's uh, just pretty far. So, and we drink uh, quite enough. Uh, let's say we drink about two liters. So we, uh, every, every, let's say every two hours, you go to the bathroom and you take a, you empty your bladder. Anyway, yeah. so now. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so that's good. Like, so. Around. Yeah, so drink enough so you walk more and force yourself to go to a bathroom, which is a, or a restroom, which is a little bit further away. Also at work, even it works like this. You know, nice. so it, it forces you to get up and move, which is also good for your joints. Cool, cool. All right. Um, and for all the people who like gardening, uh, especially my parents, and uh, when I, when I was younger. I was always gardening and I was always active in the garden with a shovel and and uh, got a lot of blisters and that was a great exercise because I was always fit you know it was hardcore work but you know oh gardening is great even like sweeping leaves just like simple things or and some people really like to get dirty with them put their hands like in the soil start digging or yeah, you can always buy gloves in case you want You to. can buy gloves as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like blisters. Of course, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so there's one th more thing I like to mention. And just because some people say you should do this activity or that activity or you feel like you're forcing yourself to do this or that, try to... It would be most efficient if you do what you want to do, you know? any type of activity that you are more drawn to would work way better and also realize that once you start doing or have a more active lifestyle like certain things like what i just said like use the f the furthest restroom or drink a little bit more water if you do all those things at the same time like we've gone through a quite a few points here if you want to do like a lot of different things at the same time that's that makes it a little bit more difficult to make everything habitual and habit is key to you accomplishing any goal so if it doesn't become a habit then it, it's it, it's too difficult so i want to say two things one do the things you want to do and try to build up regularity so it becomes habitual it's very important so accountability is very important yeah, well, you, you should hold yourself accountable, but also be gentle at the same time. Like, for example, if you, you, if you do everything it takes and, and you miss out one time of this or that, don't beat yourself up for that. that, that that's not going to work. Do you, uh, do you use a notebook or an app to... That, that would be a great thing if you can just keep track of things, like a fitness tracker of some sort, or you have a notebook in, indeed. Things like that would work as well. Okay. All right. Do you do you personally use one of those or? Yes, I have a few different exercises I do at home. Uh, I don't want to go for uh, to the gym for that. I just prefer to do them at home, and I want to keep uh, track of my progress. So, and I have a few little weights, and uh, uh, and so if I don't keep track, I just forget about it. I see. I see. All right. So now all of these, uh, a lot of these activities that we mentioned. Um, they are mostly indoors activities, except the gardening part, right? So how about some outdoor activities? Right, outdoor activities, you can even get more creative. A lot of people, they just go out running, which is great, but not everybody likes, uh, likes running. If you like to do group activities, I mean, how many group activities are there? You can you have a Football, lot of different... Football, basketball. Yeah, baseball. Uh, uh... Huntball. Yeah, they're there, like... I... I cannot really think of it at the top of my head, but there are so many. Uh, that's one. So if you like to do something with people, just do it. And you also have uh, sports like tennis or badminton. You need two people. And whatever. It doesn't matter. Just anything you like. Just to... So uh, we went very broad uh, with the whole exercise uh, explanation. So let's uh, dial back down to immunity. And um, would being active help your immune system? Yeah. We've already mentioned it, but let's let's summarize it and, and make it extra clear. So regular activities like walking, cycling, gardening, household chores, anything, be active, all every kind of activity helps you. Helps increase blood flow, 
improves your immunity, it has lots of different health benefits. So active people get sick less often than inactive people, which is what I'd like everybody to remember. Okay, awesome, awesome. So uh, let's conclude this uh, little podcast episode that um, let's do a, a few key takeaways so people can quickly uh, take away from this episode and uh, yeah. yeah so the biggest takeaway obviously is be active right and it can go through normal activities you don't necessarily need to exercise and this is major you don't like to exercise then just don't do it because I can give you a clear example of my my own father he always cycled to work he always walks to the supermarket he doesn't do any he hates exercise he, generally speaking he hates exercise he would never go to a gym he would never go to a health club he likes to cycle and walk now you can call that exercise um let's just call it some kind of physical activity he was active and the thing what makes it even more important he did that every day so for him he made it a habit years ago and even after he retired he started even walking and cycling more and for him it was very difficult to actually break that because it was a habit and habits are difficult to break we need to consciously do other activities or leave certain activities do other activities and make those habitual once we keep at it especially if you do something daily for up to 10 weeks we make our activity habitual if you do it only a few times a week it takes a little bit longer just take that into account and take up to 10 weeks if you do it daily yeah. but once it be once it becomes a habit you're you're set like nothing can break that habit unless you want to and you have that power you can do it and don't think of yourself like you cannot build any healthy habit you can you just need the right approach and realize that it takes some time Okay, you know, so for me, I I was very irregular with my exercise, and then I decided to make a plan, and then I made made a plan till the end of the year. Uh, it was a daily activity exercise plan that was not rigorous, so that I would be worn out every day and couldn't repeat that exercise. So I made it to be quite simple, not too taxing. And it had to be daily. So I would have that motivation to go, move, walk, breathe, run, you know, all the things to be part of my daily life. And I personally can tell you that I feel so much better. Like, comparing to what I used to feel before, I would always feel really down if I didn't exercise. And how much time does it take you? Uh, well, the whole, the whole routine takes me about 15, 20 minutes. Mm. That's it. Maximum every single day. No, 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 yeah. no more than twenty minutes. And you never feel exhausted. No, I never push myself past the limit, because I'm not like a bodybuilder. I'm not a competitive athlete. I'm not doing it as my job. Most people are mm. not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, fifteen mm. minutes I think is enough for mm. a regular Joe. You know. Mm. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a great thing you mentioned. I, I think. Um, I think that's a, a good thing to take away that don't strain yourself do something you feel comfortable with yeah and and do that regularly i would say yeah all right well um shall we conclude this one today yes awesome this concludes our immunity podcast we hope you found it helpful and we also hope that it inspires you to be more active and where there is a will there is a way so if you really want it you can do it so if you want to find a way to get started we included a few links in the description and those links are only for our youtube channel where you can subscribe like and share our videos so we will see you next time please leave us a review bye